everyone. Um, I'm Christina Long. I am the creative director and founder of Black Girls World Zine. And, you know, our whole mission as a small press publisher is to center women and women of color who have a passion and interest for heavy music, alternative music, punk, just anything that uh, as far as the music world goes, people don't expect women to be interested in. Um, so we are the place where uh, we love to celebrate all of those interests and, and passions in music. And we're really excited to have you join us today. Um, Courtney, why don't you introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Courtney Long. I'm the one you've been emailing a bunch. <laughs> I am the senior editor of Black Girls World. I do a lot of the writing behind the scenes. I'm a little shy. So <laughs> I'm always like, Christina, you in front. Um, but I am so excited. Um, I've been with Black Girls World since it started. I was the annoying little sister following my sister to all the shows. So it's been fun. I like, even if you might have followed me around for a minute, you certainly <laughs> eventually went out on your own to all the death metal shows yourself. <laughs> I'm Jean Fury, and I am the co author of Fallopian Rhapsody. I'm Theo Kogan, and I am the singer of Lunatics and co-author of Writing with Jean, Fallopian Rhapsody. <laughs> Let's get it started. We're I, <laughs> I really enjoyed the book. It was amazing. It was just like <laughs> such a tale of like badassery. I loved it. It was so fun. That first chapter was such a heavy hitter. Um, so my first question is, why now? Why a book now? <laughs> that is a, that's a great question. We actually started uh, this book a bunch of years ago and then um, people had babies and, uh, you know, people, you know, life sort of took over. And then we... Um, I, I credit Theo with this. I got a phone call one afternoon at one of my jobs and she said, I think we're all ready now. And I said, all ready for what? And she said, I think we're all ready to do the book. And I was like, ah, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> so that started, I would say, I mean, it. we've been writing it in fits and starts, I'd say really seriously over three or four years. Um, mm, as to, as to why now? No, I know it's, it's longer than that, but it sounds better if I say three or four years. <laughs> I was um, like, is it five or seven? Yeah, I know. It's more like five or <laughs> seven. <That's> longer. <laughs> but yeah, three or four. But I'll, as, as to why now, that's, um, that's a question for Theo. I mean, why not always really is the question. But um, I mean, we took this big pause and did all these things. And then it just felt like, well, honestly, it was like Trump being in office and nothing made me want to scream more than that disgusting piece of humanity. So that was, then it was like, okay, we're ready. And then other things happen. And we would, we kept calling our booking agent being like, okay, we want to play. And then we'd be like, no, we don't. <laughs> Yes, we do. No, we don't. And then we were like, yes, we do. And then the pandemic happened. Mm -hmm. So in that period of time, the, the really best thing about it, I can say for myself was having that time to finish the book. Mm -hmm. And really, like, you know, me and Jean started a project before this book together. And I just I don't know. I just, I feel like we have a story that is worth telling and that's important. And, you know, as a band that often got sort of pushed aside for various reasons that you can read in the book. Um, <laughs> but um, it just, it just, you know, it was kind of, let's try and get this out there. And then it was, was that my daughter? That was Lucy. That just ran. <laughs> Lucy, you can come back for a minute if you want. I say it's okay. Say hello. She's got bunny ears on. <laughs> that's Courtney Long. That's Jean over there. And that's Christine Long, their sisters. This is Black Girls World, Dean. Isn't that cool? Okay, go away. Bye. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I mean, we didn't know if we would have to self-publish. We didn't know. We just figure like all things DIY and see what happens. And that's what we did. And then we, you know, we got a book 
Yes, and we love it. I'm so excited for the rest of the world to see this book when it comes out. <laughs> it's amazing. It's hilarious. And it's Thank truthful. You. I love it. <laughs> um, I guess my next question is, what was that process like? Because there's a lot of you in the band. Like, how was it? How did you guys get it together? Was it over the phone or just? We spent a Gene? lot of time in my old apartment sitting around and snacking. We snacked so hard. We snacked so hard. We ate so much writing this book. Um, but it was, it was very difficult. There, there were, it was me and six other people. And, and one of those people, Cindy is in Germany and Becky's out in Los Angeles and ships in, in Pennsylvania. Um, so it was, um, the process was basically just interviews upon interviews upon interviews. And then I had never written a book before. This was like, this was new territory. I was, but if, if I can say one thing, it's like, nobody knows what they're doing. Just nobody ever knows what they're doing. Just do it. You are, you are in as good a place as anybody else. Go ahead and do it. So I was like, I, I can do this. I can do this. So we just started um, putting sections together and reviewing it individually, you know, one-on-one -on -one, me with uh, a lunatic or they'd like to review it together. And that, that would, you know, create new ideas. Oh my God, remember when this happened? Oh, ah, that's not how I remember it. Um, but it took, that's why it took a very long time because I mm -hmm. wanted to make sure everybody felt like they said what they needed to say. And, um, you know, that, that, uh, that can, that can, take a very long time especially like in, in when you're talking about emotional topics it's like oh well you know what I, I thought more about that and I want to I have some more things I want to talk about so it was a lot of transcribing interviews it was a lot of um, you know reviewing with each other but uh, it was basically just sort of stacking stories on top of each other in in a logical timeline that um, that everybody was happy with I have to bust in and say uh, that Jean was amazing and so like calm and like willing to let go of things that she probably worked really hard on and and also was brilliant in in doing the interview separately and then together and together we would often have like group memories where one person would remember one thing and then the other person was like oh my god I took like for myself I know there were things that Others remembered that I had totally blocked out, and um, and then Jean also had like this. I described it the other day as like a serial killer board of like oh, yeah. chapters and like, where it was and like you know pins and and I was like <laughs> wow, <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> yep. she really did. It was yep. amazing. And that you'd move things around and you'd come back another week and it was totally different. And you're like, okay, backing away slowly. <laughs> so Jean, it sounds like you put a lot of work into that board. Is it still up? <laughs> it isn't. It isn't. In fact, every time I'd look at it, I would be like, well, it doesn't even look like it would change by the minute. Honest, honest to God. It would, I would be like, why, why do I even have this here? It's like, it, 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 it changed on the daily. And I was like, I don't know. It, but, but, it, but it made for a great conversation piece when any, anybody walked in, they'd be like, what is, and I'd be like, it's just something I'm working on. Just, you know, and it starts sweating. I'd be like, it's cool. It's fine. As someone is trying to document the things you've done through your life, how did that feel, that retrospection? Because I know for me, now that I'm in my mid-30s, um, <coughs> there's a lot of um, just shaking my head as far as like, man, I can't believe we're still going to punk shows. I thought, you know, when I was a teenager, this might just be a teenage thing. But it's like, no, it really did become like a lifestyle. And yeah. Did this um, documentation allow you to kind of go back and review? Yes, big in a big way. It definitely like um, was beautiful. And to be, you know, thinking about being a teen with these women and growing up together and like, you know, growing our boobs together and then getting our periods, you know what I mean? Like, and, and um, 
and being in, like, you know, we're, there's more intimacy with this band than with most humans together, you know? And, um, and, and thinking of all, you know, like life happens and you sort of like forget. And then I went through like a personality crisis with myself, like being a mom and suddenly I'm going to school, you know, taking my child. And I feel like I'm in trouble because I'm in a school and I'm like, what's happening? And then, you know, it's like they're PTA people and, you know, it just, it's, it's, it really kind of fucked with my mind. And then to come back together with them and being, and, and just having that camaraderie of these, you know, sisters that some are going through the same thing. We're all like, you know, midlife crisis, here we are, you know, but we're also in a space ready to like celebrate all that we did together and all that emotion and all our past and, and, you know, there were times that were painful and there were times that were uncomfortable, certainly. And, you know, when I would read passages that I wrote or that others wrote, um, I would start like feeling sick to my stomach because it, was, it just came back, you know what I mean? Or I would laugh hysterically or I would cry. So <laughs> it's like, I was just, I think we were collectively ready to all experience that and all, you know, have those feelings come to the surface too. I think the readers are going to really enjoy the fact that, you know, throughout the book, there's these individualistic passages that you can just hear that person's individual voice, but there's such a sense of sisterhood. You yeah. know, I loved it. <laughs> that kind of ties into my next question, like that strong sense of sisterhood that you guys experienced in adolescence, going all the way to adulthood, where um, girls back then were traveling in packs to feel relatively safe when they were going to shows or just hanging out and just, you know, trying to just be a teen, um, you know, in New York. Compared to now, do you feel like, you know, even with kids today or with culture today, that there's still that sense of sisterhood where people travel in packs or they lean on each other like you guys were doing? I mean, I've seen some kids doing that. But, you know, in the neighborhood and around town, definitely. But I, I don't know. I hope so. You know, I imagine so. I mean, I feel like um, me and those girls and friends, it was like, it was like finding your, you know, it's like this, this teen wolf pack family, you know, to end. And I imagine that, that teens do that still. I don't, I can't say that I know yet. And I have a tween here and <laughs> she, she's got some, some friends, but you know, it's COVID. So <laughs> going into that, I only got into heavy metal or, you know, rock music. Cause I stole my sister's CD player while she was out with friends Good job. Snuck into her room. And I was like, I'm going to listen to the heaviest stuff. Cause you know, she would get those metal CDs with the scary skulls on. I'm like, Oh, I'm not scared. I'm not scared. And I put it on. I'm like, Oh, I'm scared. And run out the room. So I'm just like, you know, with the pandemic and everything, I hope people are still able to do that. Cause even in the book, it was like, you were hearing music from your sisters or your family playing it. And I'm like, how do you steal someone's iPod? I feel like it's really <laughs> hard. Like I stole my yeah. sister's iPod years ago and she still complains about it. Like she knew almost immediately. So like, I don't know how people get away with it now. In the book, you know, getting into those family things, like um, this is a personal story. When me and my sister got into like heavy metal and stuff, you know, my mom was like, <laughs> you know, because we were like, let's wear all black. Or like Christina was trying to wear rainbow stuff for pride. And my mom was like, no. <laughs> so she, we would beg and beg to go to the metal shows and get dropped off. But she would be like, you're not wearing black. So we'd show up in like the pink shirts, only people there in these colorful shirts. One time I had to go in a purple sweater yeah it's like sticking out like a sore thumb you know but seeing my mom and like this relationship she had with her mother where she's like I broke the mold I'd love to get into that like that relationship between moms and daughters where it's just like somehow they think they're like breaking the mold but then when it comes to actually raising their kids they're like oh no 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 you can't wear the mini skirt I wear the mini skirt you can't wear it like yes yes <laughs> oh yes <laughs> I'm already going through that with this one, except that I'm much more, um, you know, vocal about why, like, you know, and also she's 10. 
So it's like, she'll be like, I want, she wants like the most mega like platform, you know, like knee high boot already with like buckles and all. And I'm like, that's not okay right now when you're older, you know, that kind of thing. But um, I do feel like, you know, with my mom and other like female relatives, like, yeah, what it is very like, I broke the mold and, but it was also like, I don't, I, it's so hard to know exactly the reason. I'm assuming that my mom was harassed. I don't really know what her reasoning was or if it was just like too sexual. It was like anything that was too sexual in my teens, you know, and or before, like I think was like, whoa, no, that's not okay. That's not safe. You know, when you're older, it was a lot of like, when you're older, when you're older, when you're older. And it was like, you know, when you're a teenager, you're like, I'm gonna do it now. <laughs> I'm just going to do it anyway, you know? So there were times I would like leave the house and then like rip off something and have my mini skirt on in the hallway. <laughs> um, and with, with Lucy, she'll be, that's my daughter. She'll be like, you know, you just don't understand mom. And I'm like, look, look at me. Do I not understand? <laughs> I think I understand. <laughs> so, Yeah. Maybe I'm just carrying that whole thing on in my own way, but I think with more honesty in any way, in any sense. What about you, Jean? Do you have anything to add? <laughs> oh my God, no. Um, <laughs> my, I, I came, I come, uh, my mother is, um, has grown into her independence because mm -hmm. as a young woman, she was very sheltered. She was very, you know, went to Catholic school her whole life, um, traded prayer cards with her best friends, you know, um, but in becoming, in getting older, she really um, came into herself. And now she's 72 and you can't tell her to do fuck all. She will put you <laughs> in your place faster than anybody. Um, and she, she, I love being old. You know, well, I, I've, ne I've never felt better. I feel great. Um, and she still will tell me to, you know, hey, did you take your vitamin D today? Yes, mom, I took my vitamin D today. Did you, you got to call the doc. Hey, your car is due for, it's like all these things. And I'm like, I'm 43, ma, I got, I, I, I think I got this by now. But, um, you know, there's, there's still some, her, her independence is just amazing. And I feel like she's braver than I am. And, and if I can, I'm, I'm hoping that as I get older, I'll, I'll grow into that bravery. And she assures me that, that I will, that it just takes time. So uh, I liked in the book too, that there was just such a sense of like having role models, how important it is to have female role models in your life who can model mm -hmm. what does independence look like? What does taking care of yourself look like? Fighting for yourself look like? I think that's so important. There was a quote in the book I really liked. I think it was in Theo's section. It said, mm -hmm. um, I feel for kids who are in the middle of a tiny town and are creative, weird or gay and have to wait to get out. I pray for them and I wrote lyrics for them for real. I just, that was the book for me. That was it. That was what I needed. You know, um, me and Christina, we grew up in a small Midwestern town. You know, there were tractors on the streets for a long time. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. and we were like only black kids in our class. So that was always you know, weird too. But like, you know, music was our way out. You know, yes. being able to see shows and bands from other places who were traveling through. You know, that was our way out. So I'd love if you could talk a little bit about like, what was it like to travel, you know, like, to, mm. you know, tour and stuff. Touring was like, I mean, it was so fun and crazy. And um, I mean, just even this country alone, the amount of crazy terrain, you know, that you go through where it's like, okay, some of it's really flat and then some of it's got some really cool mountains and then it's really flat. Then you get to like, you know, um, Utah and Arizona, like you're like, I'm in the desert. And the first time we saw cacti, we were like, ah, look, it's a cactus that looks like a cactus, ah, you know, and, and all the, you know, things just cracked us up because they're, you know, you see all these things in cartoons and, and photographs and then you're suddenly there and it's, you can't believe it. Um, and, you know, going down South and being like in the Bible belt. And there was one time, I don't think this story made it into the book, but we, um, 
we were at like a Denny's, you know, or some or diner somewhere in the Bible Belt, and literally everyone came out of the kitchen and were like, "Are y'all here for the Crawdad Festival?" And we were like, "No, <laughs> no, we are not." <laughs> <laughs> so like these little things and then there was a there was another I think like Waffle House somewhere I don't remember where like probably somewhere in the Midwest or maybe also South hard to say and there was a waitress who was just like hilarious one of those like career waitress ladies like white lady all wrinkled and she was like looked at me and she was and I was like can I have grits and she was like you're a modern girl with holes in your head my earrings I had like all the way up with holes in your head and you want grits and I was like yes I do want grits <laughs> so these little like pockets of memories I mean that's also silly and then going to the UK you know that was one of our first and just like again it's like all these like cartoon everything was a cartoon you know and and it was so cool and plus like having studied art and, and architect you know all all the things that I'd studied and thought about and all the bands and thinking about all the English punk bands and you know so representing x-ray specs today and um just incredible and you know and of course snacking it's like we were such snackers I mean you know still it's like I mean I texted Jean today about a vegan feta cheese you know what I mean so it's, it's like, <laughs> that exists <laughs> yes and it's so good <laughs> What's it called? <laughs> it's <laughs> I gotta write this down. <laughs> it's called Vio Life, V I O Life, and it's vegan feta. It's on my list of things to look for. <laughs> it's delicious. <laughs> um. So yeah, and then you know, going to places like we went to Sweden and Norway, and then those snacks, like the the um the sweets that have all these salty things that you don't know is going to be salty because you're looking at, you know, like Swedish, which is like, you know, F N N N N R P P P Q. And there's all consonants and you're like, ah, you know, I don't know how to read. <laughs> and then I bought like a bag of sweets and they were all like tasted like I was licking the ocean and I was just like, ah, um, and then being in, you know, also being in Norway and somehow during one of those tours, we went to, somehow we got in, maybe it was like the promoter got us into like an ACDC concert in Norway, which like, we were like, this is so cool. We're going to see AC and I'd seen them before in, in you know, New York, New Jersey, whatever. And going to that show, we were like kind of high up. And it was when they did the like, they had like ACDC $100 bills that they spilled out, which I probably had that thing for a while. But because it was Norway, everybody had dyed black hair and blonde roots, which I thought was so funny. I thought it was the funniest thing I ever saw. The whole sea below us was all like dyed black hair. Oh, because it's Norway, most people are blonde. Oh, okay. Yes, because it's so like Aryan there. And they're all like, we want to be cool, you know? Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of it has to do with food honestly like I'm thinking I'm like and what else and then I'm like well in Spain I couldn't eat anything and then you know this place I had my period so bad that I had, couldn't go to the interview and you know it's like these are my memories but also like beautiful places and architecture and people and did you things. relate to that when you travel you're usually doing the foodie thing too Leave me alone, Christina. I always have a list of places I want to go and snacks yes. I want to have. Yeah. Yes, smart. I go to Europe, and I always get sick. It, I don't know if it was the plane ride. I don't know what it is. Like last time, um, we went to Europe. I took her. Where we? No, we didn't even go to Europe. That we just went to New Orleans. Short yeah. plane ride. I had my wisdom teeth taken out two weeks before. I got off the plane and looked like a chipmunk. She took one look at me and was like, "I gotta call mom." I'm like, "Shut up." <laughs> No. I wanted the beignets. I couldn't put yes. anything in my mouth, but like soup and like lettuce. Oh, oh. So that's and terrible. So, yeah. So she always makes fun. She, I always have to watch her eat all the local delicacies. But I just sit there with soup. For, that's because I'm not really into food. So wherever we are in the world, the first thing you're going to hear me say is, why don't we just go to McDonald's? 
and get some <laughs> and keep walking. <laughs> Just keep going. If it's your favorite place, you want to know the di- what's different in the other place. I get it. I get that. I okay. yeah. Hilarious. But yes, oh, I'm I'm the one with the list. I used to have like the the Vegetarian Times book of restaurants in the U.S. that I would carry on tour and. Um, I had the last time I went to Paris, I had a list of places I had to go to eat from and chocolate and the place with like the giant thing of moose and yeah. So yes, food is life basically. It is. It is. I don't know where the problem is. <laughs> Can't travel with her. Um, I guess I had a follow-up question just on this traveling, you know, um, in the book you talk a lot about you know, fighting against this displacement feeling that you had in adolescence that I feel like, well, I'll let you guys say, like, does everybody really go through that? Um, Because I want to get into, like, you went to so many places, you saw so many crowds. Do you feel like you were seeing everybody reflecting that same displacement, that fighting through against that displacement while listening to music and stuff? Do you feel like that was common, you know, overseas too? Or were they just like, we just love the sound of the drums? You know, what do you, what do you think? <laughs> I think it's a combination. Mm-hmm. I feel like like in, in Europe, let's say like the arts are, you know, more revered than here in some ways. So people grow up with a lot more. But I think that still people are like, you know, and, and, and booze is such a big thing there. It's like you start drinking when you're like, <laughs> I'm not going to say anything I'm going to get in trouble for. But, um, you know, uh, I feel like, yeah, I think, I think I saw that everywhere and I, and I'm still seeing it with people who write to me on social media who are like, you saved me through my teens. Like you have no idea, you know? So um, in thinking about, you know, what you said before, asked before about like the song, like I, so I had, I have a cousin who was in the Midwest who grew up there and that this one summer I was sent to stay with him and we just went crazy. And, but I was looking around, I was like, God, there's like a swimming hole and like, you know, it's like, (laughs) and, and even for myself, like, you know, being here and being able to like get on the train and go find shit and find people and find scenes and, you know, find places to fit in and thinking like, what if I lived like, even like Staten Island, I mean, at least you could get to the city from there, but like someplace where it's not accessible and, and feeling like so like you just don't belong anywhere and what you know like that I feel like music and and even being here music is what got me through stuff I would just listen to you know all these albums and songs that that made me feel like okay I'm I know that I'm going to be okay and I know that this person felt something similar and I can relate and they can relate and this is making me feel okay you know and um <clears throat> So I think, yeah, I think that has to be everywhere. And I mean, I've talked to people, I, I, I have a friend who was like, oh yeah, my, and I was like, how was your daughter's teens? And she was like, oh, she didn't give me any trouble. She was fine. I'm like, what? You know, like, who's that? You know, like, <laughs> how are you just okay? But that's, maybe she's a great mom. I don't know. What did we do for fun? The neighbors, the people would dump uh, equipment into like the creek. So I remember as a kid climbing on old washing machines, like yeah. a tiger, you know, <laughs> I was just making stuff up. Um, or, you know, we used to, dirt biking used to be like on the, on the television. We were really like, let's pretend we're dirt bikers. We just go roll down a hill and the neighbors would be like, yeah. hey, kids, cut it out. That was all we could come up with. 18, 2019, I took my mom because my sister was busy. I took my mom for the first time to Riot Fest. Oh, so mm. like the first rock show she went to I'm not sure if it'll be the only one <laughs> that was intense for her she was just looking around like first of all um Riot Fest was in Humboldt Park she grew up in Chicago so when we were driving to the festival she's like okay what's the address and I go oh Humboldt Park she hit the brake the hood that was the projects when I was growing oh we gonna get shot what the hell <laughs> <laughs> like, I was just like <laughs> I think it's gentrified now, mom. She's just like clutching her purse. Like, I, I left the hood for a reason, Courtney. Y'all are gonna have your little rock show. Okay. Hmm. You getting out by nine, okay? <laughs> Wait, but didn't she get there and just drink her way all the way? Pina Colada. She had, they put it in a pineapple. She just, 
she was gone. She was just like, oh, it's so fun. They swam. Yeah. She likes a good time. Yeah, she liked it. You yeah. know, people were getting high. She was covering my ears. I'm like, you should cover my mouth. Not my ears. It's like, you're going to get a contact high. I'm like, how is this? Your not- ears? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> oh my gosh. I have to ask her because she was supportive. She wouldn't go in, but she would drop us at the door and be like, see ya, come back. You oh, know, the show's over. Your mom on. Have you interviewed your mother yet? <laughs> no. Oh my, oh my God. God, you do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah who we'll have to that might be interesting um another part of the book I liked um in terms of like adolescence was I just really related to the fact that you know and this like kind of made us think of like black you know, made me think of what we were doing with black girls world where it was just like we kind of started the band like almost like well, what was your reasoning for starting the band like just to, so I well it was say. it was like you know we had so many friends in bands and they, a lot of them had broken up and we were sort of like, you know, it literally was like, well, we like good music. Well, we can do it too. You know, not really thinking that through, but thinking, you know, <laughs> let's try this. And, um, and it was totally for fun. And I feel like so much art comes from just doing it and not going like, I'm going to make this band and it's going to be successful and it's going to be like this. And it's, you know, and um like, you know, pure sort of energy and creativity is what makes things good, I guess, or can make things good and can um, make you suddenly wind up somewhere else. You know, it's like, oh, and now I'm in England. A little bit about that, like your experience as like a female fronted band, being out there, you know, um, there's a lot of parts in the book where you talk about, you know, how hard it is in the industry. Do you feel like, from your experiences then to now like if you came out now that it would be way better do you feel like the barriers you were facing in the industry still got some work to do you know in 2021 2022 I think that that is definitely the the truth that that there's still a lot of work to do and there's still a lot less respect for women and you know a lot less um female bands are signed that are in you know rock punk metal all of that and um you know and I've heard from other bands that are out now you know with women in them that they're like oh the same shit ha-. like you know when I had the um Theo and the skyscrapers and I was the only woman and we would load into a club you know somebody be like oh you the girlfriend I'd be like carrying the merch or carrying a you know an amp or whatever and I was like no <laughs> Mm-hmm. How, you know, that's still that in the mindset of, of, of people, you know, is just like, it just, it still blows my mind, you know? And it's like seeing a woman carrying a guitar. Hey, do you play guitar? No, I'm just carrying this because <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> like, come on. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I think we have a very long way to go. I think that there are, I think maybe if we had started now, it might be a little bit different, but I don't know. I think maybe there might be less show us your tits screamed at us. I don't, but I, I, I ask me again after a punk rock bowling. <laughs> <laughs> that is the truth. It's First been a while. You guys want to state like the book launch day? Are you taking on tour? Anything like that? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the book is out on June 1st on Hachette Books, which is very soon. Um, there's going to be a, a virtual book launch event uh, hosted by Powerhouse Arena, and we'll be sharing the link soon. So it's free you can come. Uh, awesome. Much of the same lunacy going, you know, <laughs> rehashing everything. Um, and thank you. So this is so fun. I'm your Seriously, I am a huge fan. I am so happy that you guys wanted to talk to us. And I think you are absolute rock stars in, in your little industry. And I, I already have someone that, um, that I need you to talk to. They, they have to get hooked up with Daphne Brooks, Theo, don't you think? Oh, yeah. Do you know who Daphne Brooks is? No. Oh, Daphne, that's her at Yale. She, um, 
Her latest book is 600 pages. It's her masterpiece. It's amazing. Um, it's called Liner Notes for the Revolution, The Intellectual Life of Black Feminist Sound. She is my favorite writer. And I, will, I have told her this to her face many times. Um, she just, she's an incredible music writer and her knowledge of music is insane. And she grew up going to like, you know, weird punk shows in the Bay Area. And, you know, now she's a professor at Yale and, and you know, she wrote the liner notes for um, the Aretha Franklin box set. And she's done all these amazing things, awesome. but she manages to write about music in such an emotionally uh, and an intellectually enriching way that it's just, she blows my mind every time she can write about. We'll definitely check her out. Well, thank you so much, you guys, for letting me pepper you with questions. Uh, I was like going left field with a lot of those. So I appreciate it. No, we loved it. Thank you so much for having us. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. We are just as big fans of, of you, seriously. Yes, we are. Oh, thank you. And, and if you're in New York City next time, um, next time you're in New York City, Theo and I will take you to not Pizza Hut. <laughs> Thank you. <Exactly. laughs>